Uh, this session is on difference of perfect squares, or what we call DOPS, and how to factorise these. Now, if you have a look at these two examples, um, the first one is what we call a perfect square, because if I was to um, extend this and write it this way, so that square means x plus 2 times x plus 2, we have the exact same thing, which leads us to a square, what we call a perfect square. The bottom one down here, everything almost looks the same, except you have a positive and a negative. When you have that, this is called the difference, okay, so difference of perfect squares. They, you can see how they're almost the same, but one's a positive and one's a negative. And it's important you can identify this, <clears throat> because if I was to expand number two, the answer will always be in this form, a squared minus b squared. Okay, it will always be in this form. And let's just expand this question the long way um, to see how we get that. So you can go, so you can go ahead and expand this yourself. Um, and I'll just start off. So we've got x times x and x times negative 2, 2 times x and 2 times negative 2. So we've got x squared and then minus 2x, then we have plus 2x, and then 2 times negative 2 is negative 4. And when we have um, difference of perfect squares or dots, this always happens. The x's will always cancel out. Minus 2x plus 2x is 0. And we are left with x squared, in this case, minus 4. Okay? The x's are always eliminated. <clears throat> That's why it's called difference, because difference we're subtracting. Um, now, this is in the form of a squared minus b squared, because that 4 was really 2 times 2. So really, I can write this like this, x squared minus 2 squared. It's still 4, and that's more in the form of a squared minus b squared, okay? Um, so let's use this formula now to expand this instead of... So to expand this using that formula, you have to remember this. Um, this is a formula for the difference of perfect squares. If I have a plus b, so instead of x and 3, I'm using a and b, and then a minus b, so instead of x plus, oh sorry, the other way around, I'll change this to plus and minus, so it's the same. So if I have x plus b and x plus a, x minus 3, and a minus b. Okay, this will always equal a squared minus b squared. So when expanding, we go that way. When factorizing, we have to go back this way, okay? So to expand this, I know I'm going to have a squared minus b squared. So x is, can be my a, b can be my 3. Forget about positive and negatives, just chuck it into the formula. So this will equal x squared, the minus, so minus and b is 3, 3 squared, and we're done. Now 3 squared we can evaluate, I'll just do it here. So I'll have x squared minus 9. So I can use this formula to save me all that working out. Now I want you to just make sure we've got the right answer by expanding it the long way first, just to make sure that um, we've got x squared minus 9. Okay, and this is something you have to remember because we're going to use this to go back and forth. We know how to go this way, so now to factorize, we have to now be able to go back into brackets. And let's just do a couple of examples to see how we actually do that. Okay, to factorize this, um, your first step is, is it in the form of a squared minus b squared? That's something you have to be able to identify. If there's no negative, if that was a plus, we can't factorize this using difference of perfect squares. If it's a plus there, you can't do it. But because we had a negative, that's our first check. Yep, negative, negative. Our x is being squared. Excellent. But is, is our 9 squared? No, it's not. So sometimes you have to change this to become in, into, so you can see a little square. And this is easy. 9 is a perfect square. So I can write this as x squared minus, um, and I'll put it in brackets, 3 squared. Now that we have, now that you can see a square here and a square there, and a minus here, it's in this form, okay? All you have to do is chuck it back in its brackets. And remember, a squared minus b squared is equal to, bracket, a plus b, and then bracket, a minus b. So if a is your x, and b is your 3, forget about the negative, just chuck it in, the, in that formula. I have this, a plus b, so x plus 3, and then a minus b, x minus 3. And guess what? It's been factorized. We're done. Now, if you have a look at this one, it looks really complicated, I guess, compared to what we just had, but it's not hard at all. 
Whenever you see a number in front of the, in this case, B squared, it's a 2, always try and take it out, okay? Um, because that 2 is not being squared, it's not in the form of A squared minus B squared, okay? We need to have a squared and a squared. Everything has to be squared. So let's try and take this 2 out first, and we can see 32, um, we can divide it evenly by 2. So first take out 2, so I now have B squared minus 32 divided by 2 is 16. Okay, now this 2 is just going to stay out there forever. So don't let it confuse you, it just stays out there. Now our focus is inside the brackets. So inside the bracket, we have B squared minus 16. So just write the 2 bracket B squared. Now 16, is it being squared? Because I need a, I need to have A squared minus B squared. So there's my A, it's B, B is being squared, minus 16, there's no square. But I can write 16 as what? As 4 squared. And now it's in the form of a squared minus b squared. And our final step is a is your b and b is your 4. They're both being squared. There's a minus 2. It just, just stays on the outside. Now get your brackets ready. 2 just sits out there. And we have a, so a plus b. So we've got b plus 4 and a minus b. b minus 4. And guess what? It's been factorized. That's it. So don't forget that formula, a squared minus b squared is equal to a plus b and a minus b. That's how we got b plus 4 and b minus 4. And with these examples, this factor 2 stays on the outside. When we start learning about parabolas, this will make sense why that 2 is out there, okay? Um, but for now, just make sure it's out there. Okay, our next one. Um, first step is, is it in the form of a squared minus b squared? It almost is, but we can see a little problem. This 36 is not being squared, okay? Now, I can't take out the 36 outside a bracket because there's no number in front of the, the y squared. So what I have to do is try and make this 36 a square. Now, is 36 a perfect square? Yes, it is. So I can write 36 like this. 6 squared, and then I have x squared, minus y squared. That is still 36. And the whole point of this is I now have it in this form. Now, if these having two squares confuses you, do this. Just write 6x in brackets, and the square goes on the outside. Minus, and you can do the same for y. We know, we know our index laws. And now you can clearly see it's in this form, a squared minus b squared. Your a is 6x, your b is y. So now put it in the brackets. So we have a plus b, so 6x plus y and then 6x minus y. And guess what? We're done. Now sometimes, now sometimes when we want to factorize the difference of perfect squares, um, we don't have a perfect square. Have a look at this. We've got x squared minus 3. Is 3 a perfect square? Can I write 3 with a square on top in any way? No. Um, this is where thirds come in. Okay, so remember, we want it to look like this, a squared minus b squared. It's almost there, but we need a square here. To do this, we have to use the thirds or that symbol. And the trick is you have this, x squared minus 3 can be written as now. So if I want to put a square on the 3, I have to put the opposite. And the opposite of a square is the square root. And this is what you do. You write the 3, we square root it, and then we have to square it. So I, can, I love putting it in brackets and I square it. This number here is still 3. The square and the square root, they cancel out, okay? Um, so it's still 3, but now it, that 3 is being squared. So that's now my a, and the square root of 3 is my b. Put it in your brackets. So we've got a plus b and a minus b. So we have x plus the square root of 3 and x minus the square root of 3. And that's it. So sometimes we have to actually use thirds. So have a go at this one yourself. Um, you can see that 7 isn't a perfect square, so we have to, you need to use a third. So we want a squared minus b squared. To make 7 a squared, we have x squared minus the square root of 7, and I have to square it to cancel it out, so it's still 7. That's my a, that's my b. So we have a plus b, x plus the square root of 7, and then x minus the square root of 7, and we're done. Now, 4f, this one can confuse you, so just have a look and see what we have, okay? 
we've got x plus one, but it's in a bracket. There's a plus separating them. That's fine. But are they being squared? Yes, they are. So x plus one, they're together, but it's being squared. So, so far we have the a squared, we have the minus, but we don't have the b squared just yet. But it's easy to make the b squared, b squared, four can be written as two squared. Okay, so I'm going to write it down here. So we have x plus one squared minus two squared, that is four. Now, don't let this confuse you. Your a is this. Your a is going to be x plus one, okay? x plus one can't be separated. Your b is going to be the two. Or we can put brackets around the two to show that it's two. And now put it in the brackets. So we have a plus b and a minus b. But your a is what? Your a is x plus one. So first write x plus one for a, okay? Then the formula has a plus, so we put plus. I'll put a different color, so plus b. And what is b? b is just two and close bracket. Same thing on this side, but a minus b. a is x plus one. And we've got a minus in the formula, so minus, and what is your b? b is just two, okay? Um, and now, check and see, can we simplify anything in the brackets? Yes, we can. One plus two is just three. And one minus two is just minus one. And we're done. So with ones like these, it's only tricky because your a wasn't just one variable or one number. It happened to be two things, x plus one. But both of them are being squared. Okay, just make sure um, you see that. All right, have a go at our last one first um, and then see how you go. Now, with this one, remember one is always a perfect square because one squared is just one. Okay, so this one is actually the best number because I can just add a squared right now. It haven't changed anything. Okay, um, and it's in the form of what? A squared minus B squared. Remember, X minus seven is going to be our A because they're both in the brackets and they're both being squared. And B is just one. So put it in that formula, A plus B, A minus B. So let's go. A is X minus seven. Oops, sorry, I closed the bracket. X minus seven plus, we've got plus next, and B is one, close bracket. Next bracket, A is X minus seven, and we've got a minus in the formula, so minus, and B is also one. Simplify what you can in your brackets and you're done. So X minus seven plus one is minus six, and next brackets, we've got X, and minus seven minus one is minus eight. And we're done. So these questions just involve a lot of practice um, and just see how you go. Thank you.